all come back. We have great problems with physiology. Most people do not know what it is about. When you ask somebody, in somebody in the street, he might treat it as an insult. When you ask some people in the museum, mostly the answer is posing more problems than it solves. I had the honor to receive from you your written opinions on what you think, what you, what you believe at the beginning of your study, what museology is. And I believe that this also confirmed to me and showed to me how topical the question it is and how much insecurity we experience when handling the, the term museology. The effort to achieve some level of theoretical thinking is natural for all spheres of human activities and that is why understandably with this museum activity we connect certain development of thinking and also of theoretical thinking. The development of theoretical thinking, of course, and this is what we are going to discuss tomorrow, is relatively very large, very long, and it can be shown that it was only in connection with the Pisa personalities as Quichenberg and particularly Major. There is a clarification of the fact that it is a certain specific theoretical approach. Major was the first, in fact, who defined the Latin word for our uh, field. He called it as tactica conclavium in Latin, which could be translated as the art of creating a cabinet, to create a cabinet. In the 18th century, of course, we meet with the term museography. This is connected with the author whose pen name is Neikelius and his work, which in the title uses this expression museography. The term at his time is understood as a description of the existing cabinets and museums. At the end of the 70s and in the 1880s, Zeitschrift magazine a journal is published in Germany, which is also called Zeitschrift für Museologie und uh, Antikskunde. I apologize to all those who speak German. And uh, you will have the opportunity to, to see the work 
which is devoted to the museology as a science and is dated 1883. At the turn of this century, two magazines appear, or journals appear, museum journal being one, and Museums Kunde the second. The first appears in Great Britain, the second in Germany. The publisher of the Museums Kunde journal directly in his program declaration says that the magazine the journal is published so that so that not museology but museumskunde is applied or you can also call it museography. In 1934 in Madrid a museum congress took place and two volumes are published, two volumes of work called museographie. These are devoted to the questions of more or less architect museums of architecture and museum technology, but they are also expressions of an effort to pay attention to the museum phenomenon in particular in the conceptual and theoretical level. In connection with Saki's efforts, it is interesting to note to this maturation, theoretical maturation, that, and there are also efforts to introduce the classes of museum work, or museum activities, in several countries particularly in 1882 they they found they established a call the Louvre which is in Paris which is oriented to museum work and at the turn of this century at the beginning of the 20th century at a conference of, of British museum workers they declare their interest in educating specialists in the work of museums and this, this uh, cert a certain certificate will be necessary for anybody who would like to become a director of a museum. In the Soviet Union, in the 30s, they have even a university department of museology, which opens the, the education, the specialized education of workers for museums, and is and operates right up to the beginning of the Second World War. Here in Brno, and you have already heard that, the director of the Moravian Museum, Dr. Jaroslav Helfert, at that time, founded in 1921 the lectorship of museum work, which existed right to the closure of universities during the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia. An, in, an important museum worker, museologist Coleman, once wrote that up to the Second World War we can also observe tendencies to open various courses to implement museum museological or museum theoretical education. After the Second World War, in connection with all the changes which the humanity undergoes, and we could also say with renaissance of museum work in the world scale, with, and this renaissance is immediately connected with professionalization of museum work, that is more professionals come to museums, and with increasing numbers of uh, 
uh, graduates in museums, the interest in theoretical approach becomes highly topical, as well as the interest in education in this sphere. Since the 50s, we meet with first signs signaling a new level of the struggle, we could say, of separating museum theory or museology as a science. In this historical context, we can also place this work, oh God, a syllabus of museum work in the Soviet Union from published in 1955, which is a museum piece already. It is one of the first compendium of the, of the second half of the 20th century, which concerns museum work on the theoretical level. The development did not stop there, and in the 60s we meet with further attempts to form museology as a scientific branch, a discipline. Without wanting to stress unduly the importance of Brno Museological Center, but I would like to state that at the beginning of the 60s, in early 60s, we try to solve the problem of museology as a possible scientific branch in the connection with the fact that I myself was uh, I studied philosophy and my assistant at the newly opened department was also philosopher and logistic in my profession. We realized that if museology as a science is to appear, it should correspond by its nature to scientific, uh, to meet scientific criteria. Similar conclusions were reached in in uh, the German Democratic Republic, and so-called theses to museology appeared. And uh, we also published some material concerning our. Uh, approach to museology, and all this led in 1965 to a museological symposium where we defined our approach to the subject matter of museology and to the principles of formation of its theoretical basis. In 1969, we then organized an international symposium where I where I uh, presented my basic theoretical conception of museology as a science. This material was later published in German in Czechoslovakia, but also published, for example, in Yugoslavia, or part of it anyhow, and also other uh, also published in other languages. We, of course, were not concerned about Czechoslovakia only. Oh, it was not a question of Czechoslovakia. Also in other countries, similar uh, movement is developing. Surutu, for example, from Tokyo, published in the late 50s uh, work which deals with museology and museological principles. Also, we can mention the work of a Portuguese author or some Hungarian authors, not to mention Yugoslavian professor Bauer and so on and on. These efforts in forming, codifying museology 
penetrated most intensively the 70s of this of our century. Understandably, this was influenced by the fact that further museological magazines appeared. There was a there was a platform for publishing material, and this was an important basis for spreading and exchange of information. All this effort culminated at the, at the beginning of the second half of the 70s by establishing the International Commission for Museology, ICOFOM. The first chairman was Dr. Jan Jelinek, uh, whom you met here yesterday. This commission was uh, established on our initiative as in 1969 or 67 on our initiative an international commission for the edu for the teaching was created whose first chairman was Professor Singleton from Leicester University. Thanks to the foundation of this Commission of Museology, the question of what museology is, whether it is theory or practice, whether it is a science or just a method, this, these questions became highly topical all over the world and thanks to the fact that from the 70s, from the 80s, sorry, the president was uh, elected Vinoš Sovka again Czechoslovak who made enormous efforts in this direction. The issue of museology has become uh, Thing which is discussed all over the world and has attracted exceptional attention. The proof of this, for example, is the latest meeting of our International Co Commission in India, which was devoted to the question of role of museology in the developing countries. And I've been told about a very uh, successful impact about our efforts in China, where immediately after the India conference there was their national conference of Chinese museum workers with the representatives of ICOM participating there and Mr. Vinoj Softka and where they also met with exceptional interest in museology and museum education. Now I have now tried to give you a very brief outline of the genesis of the development of the efforts to form museology and to separate it as a specific science. Now I would like to mention briefly some authors in particular and we shall hear something about their approach to the understanding of museology, how they understood this term, how they understood the subject matter of museology, the system and further symptom signs of museology as a possible scientific branch. In this case, I will not mention the older authors. I hope the authors will forgive me. Most, most of them, they are dead already anyhow. Is their works and their ideas are valuable for still valuable for us, but what I'm concerned here most is to understand the basic core of our lectures, and I would like to turn your attention to the 
latest or earliest, uh, the, the most recent works which concern museology itself. One of the widely spread works whose character of museological compendium makes it very interesting is this third already edition uh, of Bergo's book from the US of A, who tried to give I, an overall synthesis of the museological system, but he bases it on the traditional un, traditional concept of museology as the work, as a, the, uh, the science of museums, and he he distinguishes between museology and museography according to the in agreement with the ICOM suggestions but he reaches very a number of very new 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 approaches he has a number of new approaches particularly in the in the collecting activities I do not know if you are familiar with this book or if you have read it seen it, leafed through it. I would like to turn also your attention to the fact that at the same time another work by a Polish museologist Wojciech Gluzinski appears who podstaw museology, that is the principles of museology. Gluzinski pays systematic attention to the problems of museology, both in its historical and philosophical methodological aspects, and his work contains an analysis of certain of some authors of those who published their books earlier. That is, he analyzes works of Jiří Neustupný, Stransky and others. Gluzinsky himself reaches a certain opinion on museology which we can meet in the materials of our ICOFOM commission and through these materials you may have come into contact with his ideas. We can say that, generally speaking, his idea of museology is bound to the museum idea, that is, in fact, that, that the task, cognitive task of the museology is to understand, analyze, and work out the question of formation of the museum idea and its further development with all the consequences of the idea for practical institutionalized activity. Another very important work which contributed to the formation of the museological thinking was the doctor's thesis of Ilze Jan, docent Ilze Jan from GDR, who unfortunately was not published as a book, as a separate book, but only in four or five volumes of the Neue Museumskunde journal. It is devoted to general museology from the point of view of its education and research importance with particular attention to natural sciences because docent Ilze Jan is a historian of natural sciences and from this aspect she approached the resolution of uh, museological questions and the system. As far as her opinions are concerned, they get very close to 
scientific and theoretical approach to the whole field. And uh, I would like to quote what she says. Museology, in her words, is a system of knowledge on the creation, conservation, availability and the use of museum objects and the factors which determine these processes. This is what Ilze Jan says about museology. In the German Democratic Republic, the problems of museology have been dealt with very actively and intensively by also Klaus Schreiner, who published the introduction to museology, but also published an English version, a synthetic version, on the basis of museology, where he defines his opinions on the museology. And at the same time, he uses, he says that museology is in fact a branch of science which deals with collecting, conservation and uh, communication of collection items for which he uses the word musealia which I used as well but his orientation even though he also speak about these activities is to a certain extent directed towards the museum that is to a certain extent he is institutionally oriented we can also mention another author this time it is a Hungarian author Josef Kork who in the late 60s published a work on the question of museology and now this new work has been published on museology which where he tries to give a complex synthetic picture of a museological system. This author in his approach does not bring any new original orientation, museologically speaking. You know, to a certain extent he takes over ideas from other authors, also he takes over what I published myself or what has been published by other people. That is not a work which gives a new orientation to us in our museological thinking. A very interesting work, an introduction to museum work, is the work of, by Fritz Weidacher, the director of the Graz Museum. It is a kind of a practical, methodological handbook, but he also speaks about museology. And as far as his approach is concerned, he uses my thesis of museality we shall also mention here. This has become very topical in Austria, has been published for the second time and is to appear as an 
as a book, in a book form. There are other summaries which have been published in between, some compendia, which you can meet with. They've been published in Switzerland, for example, in Czechoslovakia. But this has a minor importance. But because of the pages of our Eichel Farm materials, you can also meet with the name of Anna Gregor. I will mention her work as well, which was published in Czechoslovakia, in Martin, in Slovakia. She works in the uh, museological department in Bratislava, and she tried here to formulate basic principles of museology. She draws, she sets out from the Brno thesis. Unfortunately, she did not work out, not, not working out certain principles, but deforms certain principles, which is not to the benefit of museology itself. But we shall have to take her into account as well, and we should be glad that there is another, another fighter for the course of museology has appeared. Before I turn to the activity itself and production, production of our ICOFOM commission, I would like to mention here a certain tendency we meet with today, which has been voiced in the discussion is the question of new museology or new museologies to be more precise which is closely connected with the work of a French aesthetician Deloche with his museology. I also included a chapter from Deloche into your museum material so that you can you know what his ideas are. As far as this